These are guys who the U.S. Cricket Board would have penciled in and said, you know what, this is a talent that may be U.S. Cricket International level. Florida, where the season is pretty much good all year round. Hey there, cricket lovers. Welcome back to The Reverse Scoop. As always, I'm Nabil Khan, and today we're discussing U.S. cricket's missing link. I have a very, very special guest joining me today to talk about U.S. cricket, what we're missing inside U.S. cricket, how we need to approach the growth of the game here. The guest I have today, his name is Samuel Mahabir. He is the director of New York National Cricket League. We're going to bring him on, and we're going to talk about U.S. cricket and discuss what we can do to further grow the game here at the channel guys we're all about youth development youth cricket development so again if you're just new to the channel make sure you subscribe to the channel we're going to be bringing on further guests you know to discuss on these topics on u.s cricket so without further ado i'm going to bring on my guest onto the show for today samuel mahabir samuel thanks for joining me brother how are you doing today uh thank you so much for having me uh to be a part of your your show in this a very very important topic which uh, you know we here at new york now and there's definitely much to discuss uh, so on behalf of new york national cricket uh, the team here back in new york thank you for having myself as a representative and uh, can't wait to dive right in absolutely man we're all looking forward to this conversation you know because as we know the youth level cricket here is essentially non-existent in the u.s right and we want to start from youth cricket opportunities within the national cricket league to discuss a little bit about you know how a youngster from an early age see opportunities within the league and how do how do we identify and nurture the, the young talent that catches our eye within the league like is there a process in place or how does the league approach these types of situation early on well, you started the conversation with a very important note there, and that's, you know, cricket development, especially when we're talking about youth cricket and getting the interest of youth. There are certain aspects in place that would allow this to happen. But the truth is, youth development in cricket, especially here in New York, it's virtually non-existent. It's just the sad truth. It's something that we who are, you know, behind the cricket and the ones pushing the game, that we find some mechanism in place that would allow us to develop this avenue. I believe it's something that's lacking severely, and there's lots of work that needs to be done. You know, a conversation like the one we're having, that's why such a conversation is so important and so vital. When it comes to New York National Cricket, just to give you a little bit of an idea of New York National Cricket League, it's been existing for nine years. We're coming up, up on our 10th year anniversary next year. Um, it's headed by Ramesh Arun Salam, who is the president, uh, Leroy Jackman, the vice president, myself, and other teams, which we have. It's a small group, but we make things happen as best as we can based on how we want to develop cricket. Here in New York National, being that we're in New York, we have one disadvantage that certain states may not have, especially, for example, a state like Florida, where the season is pretty much good all year round. Here in New York, we are confined to the summers, summer months, basically, to try to get cricket in place, get the game going, get the sport going, get people involved, get players involved. And one of the players which we're talking about here today is youth and getting youth involved, getting them interested. You know, here in New York, we're a very diverse state. Lots of Caribbean nationals, lots, lots of Asian nationals. So those nationals, they grew up, you know, they grew up with that culture, their family having an interest in cricket. That's why you find most of the youths that come through the game here in New York are they share a background to that culture because it's in their household. When it comes to New York National, that basically wants to see them get involved. It's all about finding a team. You know, New York National, we have a total of we post a total of 60 odd teams, 60 to 65, depending on the year that plays 
throughout the divisions, uh, where it's premier division, where it's first division, second division, you know, we have division in place that would attract players of a different skill set. So we try here in New York National to, you know, provide a stage where kids can come and play the game. In terms of the league in itself, one of the initiatives that we've done most recently is introduce the New York National Under-25 team. Now, this is a team that is funded 100% by the league. All funded uniforms, you know, everything, umpire fee, matting fee, everything that a cricket team would need to compete is provided and sponsored by New York National Cricket League. And we're saying to these kids, hey, if you have an interest in the game and you want to explore, you know, the possibility and getting your interests, you know, light that fire, see what you got, you can join this team. We have a tryout every year. You know, they come, we take a look at them, we get them in the team and we allow them to play the cricket. This way, we believe if we provide these type of uh, mechanism or type of tools, it will give them a better opportunity to explore what they see in the game and what they would like to want to become in the game. Outside of New York National Cricket League, when it comes to kid development or grassroots development, there is school programs in place where a few, not enough, high schools, they do have school cricketing programs. There is a tournament that's played and sponsored by the NYPD, which is a school tournament. And these are where most of the high school kids will get a little bit of taste of what cricket is. Gradually, you will find that those who are who have a bit more of an interest, they'll find they'll make themselves o o over to a, to a cricket team. And that is when we see them here in New York National on the fields at some point in time. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's absolutely wonderful that you have tw under 25 team in place because it obviously, you know, they don't sometimes. The younger player, as we know, will struggle financially a little bit, right? Try to make the club dues and try to make the team dues. So having something like that in place, obviously, for cricketers that are looking to just play cricket and showcase their skills, it's it's a wonderful thing to have, I think. And it's a massive, massive thing by National Cricket League. Now, let's let's get let's talk about actual getting cities involved, right? Because you brought up a very good point about, you know, the the grassroots level cricket and school level cricket. There's some programs there which got there somehow, right? probably because of the interest in the school or, or having cultural kids within the school that would want to play cricket, but getting it to every school in America, right? What would that take? Would that take for us to work with our cities? Obviously, an example we have of that is New Milford Cricket Club, which I'm a part of for the last 25 years. It's headed by Jay Singh and he works directly with the city. So he works with the New Milford mayor and, and you know, we have a rec program that we do every summer, which started about 12 years ago. And we had five kids in that program when we started. Now we have about 50 kids every summer that join us, 50 new kids that are, you know, from grassroots level here that are learning the game and it involves their parents and the community is growing. So that impact has been huge for our, our club personally here. So do you think there's a missing link there for other leagues and clubs to maybe tap into that local government to, to to help us out more with more rec programs with more visibility within the city itself definitely uh when you talk about development one of the most important things when it comes to having any type of development in place whether it's sports or anything other than that one of the key aspects is finance finance backing from your local government your local offices is key as you know, cricket here in America, as it is in New York, as it is in Connecticut, it's a very expensive sport to maintain, much less speak about development. So, yes, I believe with the right backing from local offices, the mayor, that's something that would push or accelerate the development of cricket. And we're not telling the mayors, hey, give us a million dollars and we'll develop the cricket. It can be started through different avenue. Let's get a school program in place where you can have the right coaches develop a program right within the school environment where kids can go, have that ability to learn about the game. They can get involved with the game and that's where you're gonna spark the interest. 
Cricket is something, it's catching the world ablaze at the moment. Just here in New York, we they were just, there yeah. was just an announcement for the 2024 Cricket World Cup. We have a massive stadium that's going to be built starting January. I believe they already started work in the area. So yeah. there is so much room that would allow cricket to just take over America. We just need the right mechanisms in place. And it definitely comes back to getting that support from our public offices. Absolutely. And we all know the, you know, big major league and minor league cricket that's been a boom in the last couple of years was a success last year. And I'm sure within the next five years, we're going to see growth of that league and all the funding that's going to come with it. So opportunities for youngsters will be there for them to grab if they have the skill set, if they can work on their game. Right. So how, do, how yeah. does that success look like now that let's discuss like pathways to higher level for somebody young and talented looking at next two, three years, let's say, right? What does that pathway look like for a youngster to go from club level, minor league, then to major league, maybe then, you know, U.S. cricket pathways. Let's discuss both of them separately because obviously there's a league aspect to it and then there's a U.S. cricket aspect to it. So let's go with U.S. cricket first for somebody who's young and that wants to play U.S. cricket. What does that pathway look like? in the short term and in the long term? I think one of the key aspects here is something very important, and that aspect is exposure. You know, you would find a lot of times, especially here in New York, there is tremendous talent when it comes to cricket and cricket talent, cricket players. The issue that we have is that many of these talent, they go on check they go on scene they're out here performing week after week match after match and no one knows about it in terms of a pathway to new york uh well not new york but usa cricket getting into that u.s team when it comes to that aspect i believe more needs to be done on the part of the u.s cricket cricket board and their platform and the way they approach players you know you would find that a lot of these guys, they look for players who would come through the minor leagues and the major leagues. And I agree, these platforms are wonderful for exposing the game in, in the region. But we also need to look at developmental stages of cricket, which is what we're discussing here today, the grassroots aspects. More often than not, if you can find talent, at especially at a young age, with the right development, with the right training materials, they can and they do have the ability to become world-class players. But it comes back to exposure. I believe more needs to be done from the U.S. Cricket Board in terms of scouting so that these players can be seen. When it comes to the league aspect and how do we get these players and their performances out there, one of the avenues that we've been taking is social media. Every matches that plays, we try to highlight players who are doing exceptionally well and, and making their stats and their performances known, whether it's via a media post, a new US, US paper write-ups, in topics when it's being discussed such as these, you would hear certain players being discussed and mentioned. So it's all about exposure at the moment, getting these players seen, getting their names talked out and letting U.S. cricket know, hey, we have guys who can push the limit and who deserves a call up. We just need you to look in our direction. I totally agree there. And, you know, do you think this has more to do with a lack of communication on U.S. cricket management's and to be able to have a clear pathway defined for a young cricketer? Because that's somebody, again, it's something that but the ball lands in their court, right? But it's not clearly visible to any player that would want to get to that level or decides, hey, I want to make this my career. They have no pathway or no vision to, to know, hey, this is what I got to do next. So do you think that's mostly because exactly. of US mismanagement? Yes, I do believe that not enough is being done to create a pathway for young cricketers, developing cricketers, and even, you know, cricketers who are not that out, but they're well established and they're playing a cricket here, hoping for an opportunity somewhere, not knowing where or when or how that opportunity will come. 
most of the cricketers that are here in New York that perform well, their idea of making it to a U.S. team is probably through a minor league setup, getting into a tournament that is a little bit more recognized than just the club tournaments, hoping that they have the opportunity to play, execute their game, and have the eye of someone in the right position to say, hey, wait a minute, who's that guy? Well, let's have a look at him. Yeah, but even in those teams, right? Like we've had examples where we've seen 40-year-olds, 45-year-olds, 50-year-olds playing in minor league cricket. Like, do you think that has a really negative and bad impact on what we're trying to achieve, obviously, as a cricketing nation? You know, a hundred percent. Because that show clearly 100%. shows what their mindset is. Yes. Well, the sad thing is about cricket is that it has become it's become an, a, a, an organization or industry that's more entertainment you know, entertainment base, where, rather than, you know, developing a sport in a professional manner where we look for a long term or where we look to create a team that can compete in a World Cup stage event rather than just a tournament that we're putting on just for a show and to get some some sales, you know. So, yes, yeah, so when it comes to players, especially those older players in the bigger tournaments, I believe that better management or a better structure needs to be put in place. I'm not saying, hey, well, let's not have any of these guys play in a tournament. That's not what we're saying. But what we are saying is that, well, let's have something in place, a mechanism, a rule that limits the type of players that are being introduced into these high level tournaments. We should emphasize more focus on locals. You know, if we're going to develop cricket here in the U.S., we need to focus on on the local guys that we have here and develop our own. Many of the tournaments that we have going on around the U.S. here, a lot of emphasis are being placed on the overseas stars, which are great. You know, getting those overseas stars into tournament is important. You know, they bring value, they bring experience, and they bring a level of cricket that many cricketers here in the U.S. would not have seen or been, been able to be around. So there is value in all of that, but there needs to be a better structure in place that would allow and put development of cricket as the first priority over the you know the the secondary aspect of the, of the tournament, the cricket sales, the glitz, the glamour. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it hits the you hit the nail on the head there with you know exposure as well, because that's where it lacks. Our local cricketers. I don't think we have a lack of talent. The amount of cricket I've played here in the U.S. and the amount of talent I've seen not make it to the next level is because of exposure, and and they give up. Because it, it, it nobody's watching, right? And nobody's watching what they're doing, what their numbers look like. Even when they get to that next level, you know, they have to compete with guys that are 20 years older than it than them that have more of a pull within mm -hmm. the team, or there's some internal politics going on. So there's a lot to deal with at that level for a player to even get a look in to some some teams. Very interesting point about that is as well is that while it is a difficult road getting players into that, you know, that US setup, some players have managed to get in one foot into the door. Just off the top of my head, I can recall two of those individuals who came out of out of New York and would have played cricket through New York National Cricket League in many tournaments year after year. And those two players of most recent uh, selection would be a player such as Dominic Ricci or, or Trinson Carmichael. These are guys who we have seen, you know, get a foot into the U.S. setup. They play a few games and then all of a sudden you don't see them in the setup anymore. Now, there can be lots of deba debate in terms of, you know, performances and etc but the fact comes back to we're talking about development these are guys who the u.s cricket board would have penciled in and said you know what this is a talent that may be u.s cricket international level when they are selected and if they are not selected after that what what is it that we have in place that would develop these cricket cricketers and not just see them go back to the local tournaments 
they play their matches, they hope that they score and do well and hope to get selected again. That should not be. I believe that guys who do make it to these levels by the U.S. board that would allow these players to develop themselves and keep themselves ready for selection, not just fade away in the background. So, yes, there is so much room in place for development of cricket, whether it's grassroots, whether it's at the top level. Much is left to be desired. Absolutely. And, you know, there has to be an academy in place for these guys to go and work within the academy because that's how it works, um, you know, in Pakistan or in West Indies. They have academies for cricket, right, where if a player that they want to invest in, they send them to the academy where they have their national coaches and they stay under those watchful eyes because they have eyed that talent out. And we may have some type of that process in place. I mean, they do like their yearly tryouts and those types of things. But again, those are invitational only. And the amount of talent, I think that's there just sitting at home on their couches. It's probably unreal that, you know, what would give motivation yep. to those guys sitting on their couches that are really amazing players that, hey, let me go give it a shot. You know, like what would get them off the couch? Well, you know what they say, if you don't use it, you lose it. So, yes, yeah. you know, while you're getting called, you get called for a tryout. If you haven't been playing or getting the right coaching that you need to stay at the level that's required to play national and international cricket, it's very difficult to go to these tryouts and perform exceptionally well unless you're having a really good day. You know, cricket is all about form. A player may not be in the best of form at the time of a tryout, but that player may have more exceptional ability than someone who may have been performed well on that given day. So yes, like you said, an, an academy or a program being in place where these players who have been identified can fall back to and get the right coaching, the right training, the right fitness programs in place so that they can maintain the level that's required to compete at that level. Yeah, absolutely, man. And it's so crucial, the game itself, because obviously to stay clear-headed and be able to perform at the top level, you have to understand the processes that's required. And for that, you need good coaches to make you understand, dude, every success is a process. Your consistency is going to be a process. And you follow that process. And once you learn the process, you work at it. And that's how consistency comes about, you know, because you're just following a process that's laid out in front of you. But a lot of these guys with all the talent are not aware of, of the process that needs to be repeated. Um, and again, that's due to lack of, you know, coaching and, and, and getting them involved with the right people um, to talk to and, and really discuss their games. Yep. A lot of the talent that you would find going around, a lot of these talent are self-taught guys who go and they put in their work on their own and they get the coaching wherever they can. You know, they show up to a tournament, they show up to a match, they see someone <clears throat> that has already established, they have a conversation with them. They're self-taught, they're self-developed, and that should not be. Yeah, big time. I mean, you know, it's again for a cricketer, the motivation is not there right now, right? I mean, the way I look at it, do you agree that we are probably still playing cricket like we somebody played in the 60s or the 70s, maybe back in our countries? I mean, we're that far behind, maybe 60 years, 60, 70 years behind in cricket development um, compared to other countries. Yeah, uh, I mean, cricket has been a part of America for a very, very long time. But when it comes to actual development of the sport and getting it to a professional level where we, you know, where we know it can be, yes, we are definitely way, way, way behind. And we have a lot of catching up to do. But we can only do that with the right people in place and with the right backing from the, from the higher offices. Absolutely. So how do we get into these offices again, Samuel? Let's get let's talk about like actual solutions of, you know, getting into these offices from the league perspective. What do we need to do? Um, you know, do we need to work with them on, as you said, programs or like summer programs, park and rec programs that gives us more visibility? 
I believe, you know, to get into that office and to get into a conversation, a serious conversation, because we have had many instances where conversations were had. But I believe to get into these offices, I think more awareness needs to be brought to our local offices. And we as leagues, not just New York National League, not just any other league here in New York or elsewhere, we need to show our public office that, hey, there is value in, in what we are trying to develop, value that would benefit the, the, the community, the community as a whole, the country as a whole. Sports is something that you know very well, that you can get an entire nation rallying and I believe that these officials need to realize if you are the guy or, or woman that is pushing the sport, you're going to have communities rallying behind you. And I believe it's on tap. The, you know, the possibility that exists, it's, it's on tapped and we need to get them involved. Something very simple that they can do to help develop the game, especially here in New York, you know, earlier we talked about finance being an issue. Again, we don't need a million dollars. What we do need is, for example, the park department. Have them have something in place that would allow to develop the sports. Just here in New York National, just to run our yearly tournament causes, of, causes us approximately $60,000 just for permits. You know, that's the cost just for permits to allow ourselves to have a field, an undeveloped field to play the sport. So initiatives, uh, compensations for leagues, for the people who are trying to put the sport, making it just a little bit easier to develop the game, these are conversations that I believe the officials need to have with us as league representatives to find a way, a channel that makes it just a little bit easier for us to progress. Absolutely. And it's, it's again, very crucial, as you mentioned, to you know get within there, making them realize the opportunity that exists for the growth of the game and the, the market that's already so huge with you know, so many cultural people that love cricket are here within this country, but that opportunity for them to watch it on, you know, daily TV or or do something, you know, it's not there. So there's a lot of improvements to be done from that aspect. And, you know, again, I would like to mention New Milford Cricket Club's example because we didn't start by going and saying, hey, we want, you know, again, all this money. We offered them to run the summer program on our time. We didn't ask for anything. And we said, we're going to run the summer program and you guys can charge $50 per kid. You guys, you know, keep the funding, whatever comes in. We just want to grow the game at the grassroots level. We already had a feel with them. And then after that first successful uh, summer camp that we had, the city started to provide us with funding little by little to upgrade on the fields. We were able to create a turf wicket here in New Milford Cricket Club at Clatter Valley Park. We were able to create two batting cages with nets. You know, other upgrades were done to the field. They took out a lot of those bushes, put all solid grass all around, rolled the field out. And next year, they'll be putting up bleachers and stuff like that. So they're now finally getting involved with, you know, what we've been able to do and build a community around that. But it started very small and it started from just one club going to the city and saying, hey, we're going to do a summer program for the kids. And, you know, you guys can put it up on your website. You guys advertise for it. Put it up on the newspapers, $50 for registration for the entire summer camp. And kids registered for it. And, um, you know, once we start that, once we got that going, the city really got more involved and got serious. So until I feel like we show the city cities that, hey, we are serious in doing this stuff. I don't think the city is going to get serious. So they want to see the seriousness of what we're trying to do and the impact that we can have. And we have to show it to them in my like example that I'm showing, right? Because for all the years that we were trying to do something, we never got any success with the city up until we launched this youth program and partnering with the city where that gave us a, a headway into the city a little bit for, for further help. 
So maybe that can be a blueprint for other clubs and other leagues to approach and maybe, you know, just start very small, one small program for youth. Do you think that's something that can be applied or is viable for leagues and cities across the board? Yes, and I'm very happy to hear of your success, you know, in getting that uh, that program going. It's definitely something, an example that many leagues can follow. Here in New York National, it is something that we have also started and is uh, currently in its uh, infancy stages. We, at the moment, we're working on building awareness with the public office, the mayor's office. And by building awareness, we would invite them over to our matches, our finals, to get them to see, to come and take a look firsthand what it is that we are offering getting their interest sparked. And we believe with the uh, introduction of the World Cup uh, coming to New York in 2024, I believe that has also paved an avenue of uh, you know a little bit more interest in our mayor's office. And uh, we're gonna continue working on that. Like I mentioned earlier, we have recently started the New York National Under 25 team, which is only one years old this year 2023 was their first season and they went out and they performed well they won a lot of matches and they failed a lot of matches but again that is what we would expect from a under 25 team that is developing and that's something that we will be looking to push strongly in the future we do have initiatives in place of approaching uh, the Department of Education to emphasize getting the schools in place and getting schools into the league. We offer any school team here in New York National free entry into the into the tournament. We would go as far as to running a division just for the kids if they're coming under the school. But one of the roadblocks that we face is that there are many complications when it comes to the Department of Education and getting the right materials and as all those aspects in place. So there is a lot of conversation, a lot of things that needs to be ironed out before we can progress. And that is what we're currently working around. That's awesome, man. I mean, it's it's so great to hear that, you know, you guys are working towards it and you guys started this last year but i guarantee you two three years down the line it's going to turn into something that's going to be you know mind-boggling and bring a lot of you know value to the younger players and the league itself that would fully deserve you know all the uh, for all the work that you guys are doing to get the game that we you know definitely love that's the dream here in the u.s that's the dream absolutely definitely so that's like, the dream that's the dream yeah yeah absolutely and you know you mentioned um educational sector for U.S. cricket, you mentioned mentioned some initiatives in getting involved within the schooling schooling system. So, from from that standpoint, how do you see the future? Like the next ten years, do we see growth within the schooling systems in the next ten years? Let's say, how many is there a plan of say like, hey, I want to at least get to you know this particular city. We go with a couple of schools and then grow from there. I know that we're already in some schools. But how do, what's the plan for expansion, essentially, within the schooling system? Ten years down the line, I do, see, I do see and I do predict that cricket is going to be at a stage where, you know, no one here in New York or in the U.S. probably thought that it could ever be. And that's, that's, that's saying, you know, that's being very positive uh, based off of current trend, you know, within the past uh, I would say three to five years, the cricket has progressed. You know, it has progressed. And over the past three years, I would say it has progressed quite rapidly. Ever since the introduction of T20 cricket, it has been sparking wildfire all over the globe. Coming back to more homegrown here in the US, I do believe that the cricket has a far way to go, has the ability to go. And I, like you said, it comes down to the grassroots level, comes down to the school level, and I believe what needs to be in place is to have a system, a regional system, zoning system that would allow schools to compete in their local areas and progress into different regions 
within their own network that would allow them to compete. There's always pride in competing when you're representing something. You know, let's have a state, a state uh, championship competition in place. Well, let's get these kids involved. Let's get them interested. Let's get them fired up to represent their state. New York versus Connecticut. That's something that will drive any young kid into wanting to be a part of the sport because it brings that sense of pride, that passion, which we all know cricket is associated with. Cricket was built off of passion for the game, the love for the game. And that is what we need to have injected into the school system. Absolutely. And and would you say the same for our college system as well? Because I know there's some college level cricket that happens across the board. Um, and, you know, that can be further worked on because I, I feel there's a lot of opportunity there as well for growth within the college system. And we've seen how college systems are for baseball and football and basketball. Um, so they have an example in front of them that they can apply. And I would think that there's a lot of people within each college is because the numbers are so vast yeah. that you can come up with a, you know, one college team per college for cricket, right? If, if the system was placed at least. Definitely. And I, I, I don't believe that they need to go build an entirely brand new system for cricket. They already have the blueprint right in front of them. You know, they're the, the yeah baseball sponsorship the soccer sponsorship the u.s football sponsorships it's already there and it's already proven and shown that it works all we need is the right people in the right offices who take these positions to stand up own their seat and say hey this is what needs to be done. We have the community that will back us up. Let's go there. Let's get it done. Yeah, yeah. So, like, absolutely. And on, on that note, how would you assess our current U.S. management? And obviously, there's room for improvements there. And um, we got to have management that obviously is thinking about this grassroots stuff. Do you think this is top of their mind? And, and what do you think is top on their agenda right now? What are they prioritizing? That's a that's a very tough question, um, you know, to to dive into. I don't believe, with all honesty, that grassroots cricket and developing cricket is at the top of their agenda. It's not a priority, in my view, in the view of New York National. Um, but it needs to be, you know, if they are definitely serious in taking cricket to the level that we know that we all know that it can be. It's, it definitely needs to be on their agenda, you know, at the top of their list. Um, there is so much room for improvement. And like, you know, something that we've been harping on all through the, the, this conversation is uh, structure. I believe much is left to be desired, much more can be done when it comes to developing a structure, um, you know, having a path set and put in place where players can say, hey, okay, I can start at a grassroots level. I can move on to my school team. I can move on to my league team. I can represent the state team. I can get recognized at regionals. I can get pushed into a minor league, into a major league setup, and eventually into the U.S. national setup where I can represent my country at an international level. On the international stage, there is no better feeling than making it to that, that stage. But how do we get them there? There are no steps. There are no elevators. There's just guys hoping and waiting for an opportunity that may or may not land in their laps. And that is not how you're going to develop the game. We, starting from the school levels, to the club levels, to the regional levels, state levels, we need to have a better structure. We need to come together as a cricket thin community, work with each other and develop a clear path that would allow the game to go in a direction that we want it to, see, to, to go. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one place where we go wrong, right, is, is we follow examples of other countries. We follow 
India, Australia, West Indies, Pakistan. Oh, th this is how they're running their board. So we try and whoever comes into power within the system, right? They try to do, do it that way. Oh, we've done it this way in that system. So let's bring it over. And they don't focus yeah. on the culture and the roots of the game here in the U.S. and the sport here in the U.S., right? And how the landscape of the U.S. sporting side is. So they need to approach it differently which i think that that's what they're doing with you know ip uh, with major league cricket and uh, minor league cricket with a lot of the ipl owners investing um in this in this part of the world right into these leagues so like what do you what do you think you know on that standpoint like do you think there's improvement for us to do there yep uh definitely uh cricket here in new york it's a completely different ball game from that of cricket in in india or australia or the west indies pakistan sri lanka you name it these are countries these are nations who have spent years decades century playing the game we are nowhere near the, that level the level that those levels that we are looking at are levels which were to spent all these years and the time that, that they needed to get it to where it is today. So we need to forget about their system, look at what we have on our table and find a solution that would work for what we have and the challenges that we are faced with. You know, uh, looking back at Major League, Major League was, was a was a really well put together tournament, but you know I still believe that meant much was left to be desired in terms of the structure of the tournament. Um, you know I believe that there were many many talent that did not get an opportunity, uh, and I mean the tournament it's in an early stages. You know our hope is that going forward that you know changes and tweaks in the system here and there will get it to where it needs to be. But again, it comes down to allowing equal opportunity to each and every single player and more desire and emphasis needs to be placed on local U.S. players as opposed to that high influx of international stars, which again, it's great to have those stars in any tournament. Any league would be you know, happy to have those type of players, but I believe better structure and better you know selection plans need to be put in place that would allow more focus on local talent because at the end of it all who is going to represent the u.s it's the u.s local players and we cannot expect to have high caliber players if we are not giving them each and every single opportunity to play the game develop the game and take their game to the next level yeah, I mean, totally agreed. And, you know, talking major league, we know only a handful of U.S. players played in that league, maybe four or five maximum, right? So the rest were all mostly out, outside players or players that came overseas here in the U.S. system um, after cool. retiring from their respective countries. So they were given more of a look in, and I'm sure that's probably because of the watchability and the viewership that they have to bring to the tournament. But how much do you think that impacts their decisions, right? Because again, it's the, the development of U.S. cricketers and getting them the opportunities needed is not top of mind. It's mostly to get their business off the ground or make sure their investments are secured first, and then maybe they can think about the growth. Yeah, we cannot deny or turn a blind eye from the fact that, you know, throwing out a tournament such as Major League, it's all, it will always be about viewership. It will always be about your ticket sales and how do they, as an organization, ensure that they, you know, cover themselves with a system that would allow them to, to have a successful tournament. And that there is where you find that influx of superstars because everyone wants to see a Nicholas Puran. Everyone wants to see a Jimmy Nisham, you know, just to name a few of these guys. But again, if we are going to talk about development and cricket development, let's ask ourselves one basic question. At the end of that tournament, who benefits the most? 
at the end of the day, are our international stars. They're going to come here. They're going to play the tournament. They're going to go back home with a pocket full of cash. What is left for our local players? How did they progress? How did they develop their game if they even had the opportunity to make the team? You know, who is being, who's be benefiting the most out of this tournament? So again, it comes down to, you know, having the right system in place that manages the skill set, that manages the players and allows the ability where, you know, the locals are still getting a little bit more of an opportunity than just a tournament, calling it, you know, a U.S. tournament, but it's not being, players of the U.S. background are not being being looked at it's it's it doesn't it doesn't work out yeah absolutely i feel they need to have at least two three under 19 players in their squad maybe one play every game and you know they, they need to have some type of criteria where they get these guys into into the setup sure you can have seven eight six seven players that are overseas and national stars but get five players in there that are local Right, because you need that exactly. exposure. You need these 19 guys to be around the setup, even if they're not getting games. Make sure they're around these guys in the setup. So, a lot's left to be desired, as you said. It's been a great conversation so far with Samuel. And Samuel, we're gonna finish off soon. So, any uh, future vision and solutions you wanna discuss as we close off our conversation um, regarding some of the challenges we mentioned about. Obviously, not having a clear system, grassroots level cricket, our ability to get into schooling system, our ability to get into the um, our, our politics and our town halls. There's a lot to be done, right? There's a lot of missing links. So what are some last thoughts and solutions from you that, that you think are top should be our top priority? Well, it's, a, you know, over the, the time that we've been discussing, I must say that I've had a great time here with you discussing these topic. It's always a pleasure to talk cricket, discuss cricket, because it, for us, it's a passion. You know, it's it's a lifestyle. Um, thank you for having me on to represent the New York National Cricket League and our team back here in New York. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you. But coming back to, you know, topics and solutions, we've emphasized a lot on you know, getting our mayor offices involved. I believe there is still a lot of room in place for also the private sector, you know, local businesses. Sports in a community is something that brings a community together. And a community that is together will thrive. And a thriving community for you as the businessman means that it is now an environment where the community will also support you. So I would like to take this opportunity to call on you know, our private sector to get involved. Find a league that has a vision that you believe into, you know, you, when you look at their vision, it's something that you can support, that's something that you can get behind and get involved. We need support. And when we say support, and when I say we, I mean the Kirkuton community, whether it's New York, Connecticut, Tennessee, Texas, Florida, US in general. Cricket needs support. Cricket needs the right individual pushing the game and pushing it in the right agenda. Um, and yeah, I mean, other than getting the development in place and finding the right structure, it's going to take a lot of time and it's going to take a lot of work. But I believe, you know, conversations such like this and, you know, guys such as yourself who allow us to go on a platform to get this type of messages out, it's crucial. And like I said at the beginning of our conversation, when you're looking to develop something, conversation is always usually the best place to start. Absolutely, man. And thank you so much for your insights, Samuel. It's been an amazing conversation and I could not agree with every single one of your points. And uh, to our viewers, guys, thank you so much for watching so, so far. And as you know, we focus mostly on youth development here in U.S. cricket because, again, we feel it's it's 
a, a big, big part of the missing link inside the U.S. cricket, the grassroots level cricket. So again, if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit the like video, subscribe to the channel for more cricketing updates. We're going to be bringing on more guests in the future, discussing and building off of this conversation that we've had from Samuel and what we've learned from here. We're going to take these learnings into our next conversation and try and expand further with more relevant guests from, from the leagues. So again, Samuel, thank you so much for all your information and all your knowledge and your time for our viewers. And again, good luck to National New York National Cricket League on all its um, you know future plans. And if I could be of any help to you guys in the future, I'm right here. And yeah, thank you so much again for for joining. And I'll catch you you know next time. And guys, thank you so much for watching uh, the Reverse Scoop channel. And we'll catch you guys next time. Thank you so much.